Personally, I always had a strange fascination with large craters created by massive impacts somewhere on planet Earth. Probably because I always loved dinosaurs, and discovering that an asteroid potentially caused their demise made me super curious about other potential collisions that might have been even more powerful. And based on the size of our planet, it's technically supposed to be covered in craters, and at some point it probably was. But because of a lot of geological activity on the surface, most of them have been erased a long time ago. But you can kind of imagine how many impacts planet Earth must have had by just looking at the surface of the Moon. Without geological activity, everything here was frozen in time, and the number of impacts here was probably much lower. Nevertheless, in the last few decades, scientists have actually discovered several impacts that are definitely much larger than you would expect with three now becoming really famous and pretty well known. Now the most famous one, the Chicxulub crater, is of course the one that happened 66 million years ago and killed the dinosaurs. This unusual crater, roughly around 170 kilometers in diameter, was only discovered a couple of decades ago and is part of what's known as Alvarez hypothesis, originally proposed by Luis Alvarez and his son Walter back in 1980. But it wasn't until mid to late 90s and more specifically until the last couple of decades, that this explanation has been generally accepted to be correct, with this now being certainly a large crater. Although the person behind this, Luis Alvarez, deserves a separate video because this guy is just absolutely insanely brilliant. A Nobel-winning physicist who has been responsible for a large number of incredible discoveries. One of them being this. But there are two other craters on the planet that are considered to be larger and definitely more destructive although they might have actually been created a long, long time ago. The most famous one in North America is the one that many Canadians have driven through many times. It's actually right here in the Sudbury region, and it's essentially known as the Sudbury Basin. And intriguingly, if you ever drive through this region, it feels really eerie, because you actually do feel like you're inside some kind of a crater. There are certain regions there that drop by several hundred meters all at once, with these huge regions of forests just growing on the bottom of the crater. At least that was my impression when I drove through here back in like 2005 or something. And this crater is a little bit larger, but was also created approximately 1.8 billion years ago, during the famous Boring Billion. This is actually one of the few events we know occurred back then, with pretty much nothing major happening otherwise. If you've never heard of Boring Billion, you can check out one of the videos in the description explaining exactly what it is. And so for a lot of Americans, this is maybe one of the coolest locations to visit if you love craters. But the biggest structure has always been in South Africa, the famous Vredefort impact structure. It's actually large enough that you can technically see it from outer space if you know what you're looking for. But because this is actually an ancient structure, it is so much challenging to actually find it without knowing what to look for. So here's this unusual structure you see right here, with the remnants of the impact still present to this day. But this structure is technically much bigger, it's approximately 300 kilometers across, and most likely formed about 2 billion years ago. So basically when Earth was mostly dominated by bacterial life. And this has always been the largest crater known to us. But even here, the impactor was probably not very big, maybe 10 to 15 kilometers in size. Definitely much more than some of the impactors we find on the surface of the Moon and of course Mars. For example, in case of Mars, something really major must have smacked into it in order to create unusual formations across the entire Northern Hemisphere. And so the question has always been, what about Earth? Why are we not seeing these impacts more often? And so obviously similar impacts very likely happen on Earth as well. But because of the powerful erosion forces mixed with plate tectonics and a lot of other geological activity, including volcanism, after billions of years, all of them pretty much disappeared. And since a lot of them were probably in the oceans, they are unlikely to have left a lot of clues behind. Nevertheless, some scientists out there never gave up. They always believed we're going to find more just by looking for various anomalies on the planet and by looking at various geological records by dating certain rocks in those locations. And it looks like, maybe, just maybe, scientists have just found another one right here, in the Down Under, somewhere in southeast part of Australia. And this is actually really exciting, because if confirmed this would make it the biggest crater we've ever discovered, and also potentially the second crater that might have been responsible for another extinction event. So hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to be discussing this really really unique discovery that basically suggests 
Australia has been hiding a huge crater for many years, and it might have been a colossal event even bigger than the one that killed the dinosaurs. Discovered near a location known as the Niliquin Municipality, and in essence, even visible to some extent on this map right here. I mean, this might be a part of it. So yeah, let's discuss the details. Interestingly, unlike other regions on the planet, Australia does not really have as much erosion and tends to preserve very ancient structures. The entire continent currently contains 38 confirmed craters and 43 potential impact structures visible on this map. All of the green and red dots represent confirmed structures. Red ones are actually really big, potentially more than 100 kilometers wide, with the yellow dots representing potential structures. And notice how there is an unusual region that seems to contain an ejecta from ancient impact. Basically, this is the leftovers as they fell onto the planet after some kind of a major impact. Now, in the past, some of this ejecta has been associated with what's known as late heavy bombardment that happened approximately 3.2 billion years ago. But sometimes the ejecta can actually be used to find a potential more recent crater by essentially looking at where it possibly came from and trying to trace back the origin. And the thing is, the two scientists behind this study have been actively trying to figure out what's happening here since the late 90s. But it was after 2015 and around 2020 that they finally started to find clues by using various magnetic maps produced by various satellites. And here, by looking at magnetic intensity, you suddenly start seeing an unusual ring structure and a lot of multi-ring patterns usually associated with craters. Very similar structures can be found in the Vredderford and Sudbury craters as well. And over several years, by using different magnetic maps, it became possible to start seeing these features that would be actually otherwise very difficult to explain. For example, there are obvious signs of symmetrical rippling pattern as if something smacked from the top, disturbing hundreds of kilometers of ground underneath. In some sense, it's very similar to what you expect from, for example, a rock or even a droplet falling into the water, producing similar wave-like structures on the surface. So this is kind of what we're seeing here as well, except that it's basically the ground. With all of this implying that it was produced during an impact with extremely high temperatures and very intense magnetic fields, with several other structures visible as well. For example, the top of the dome is approximately 10 kilometers below the mantle, and there seem to be also signs of radial folds moving away from the center. These features are very similar to other very well-known craters. As a matter of fact, it's almost identical to what we find around Rutherford. And so, is this basically the new record holder? Well, it most likely is, but it would be very difficult to definitively prove this unless we get the samples, specifically samples containing shocked quartz or a lot of other similar formations expected from a massive impact. And so something like this has been obviously done for other well-known craters, but in this case, it would be a bit of a challenge. We would actually have to somehow drill several kilometers deep into the ground in order to collect necessary minerals that would be required to not just prove this, but to also date this. Essentially figuring out exactly when this happened. Now, based on the assumptions from previous studies about this region, at the moment it's assumed to have happened anywhere between 445 to maybe 470 million years ago, or maybe even 520 million years ago. So the actual date is not clear right now. With the impact happening on the eastern part of Gondwana continent, right before it split into other continents, including Antarctica. You can actually try to visualize this using this beautiful map created by Ian Webster, and here, by going back in time, we can sort of start seeing what Earth looked like approximately 470 million years ago, or even 500 million years ago, as well as 540 million years ago, when Gondwana continent was in existence. And so it's quite possible that somewhere in this region right here, when early life was still developing and becoming more complex, a major impactor suddenly interrupted everything. And if this indeed happened approximately 450 million years ago, it might have been responsible for what's known as our division Silurian extinction event. One of the biggest extinction events that suddenly erased 85% of all species on the planet and might have been at least twice as damaging as the event that killed the dinosaurs. The extinction event that suddenly erased a lot of really strange mollusks with these cool looking hats, making them suddenly disappear from the planet. Their weird hats, by the way, might have been left in the mud in the oceans, potentially sticking out all across the surface 
mostly because they seemed to be everywhere back then. And so exactly what happened to them has always been kind of unknown, but the impact hypothesis could provide some answers. But it could have also happened at a different time, and so we're actually not going to know exactly when until someone is able to collect the samples from underneath all of this. But drilling this would be very difficult. We would have to reach depths of over 10 kilometers. And so at the moment this is an interesting hypothesis, but it's not going to be proven anytime soon. But when it comes to this being a crater, it almost certainly is. It's very difficult to explain all of these features without some kind of a large impactor, and as far as I know there is no alternative explanation to any of this just yet. Which of course means that we now have a new record holder on planet Earth, the largest crater ever found, potentially double the size of the previous record holder from South Africa. This here is about 520 kilometers across, and potentially responsible for stealing all of these cool hats from these unusual creatures, leaving all of them across the oceans. But as always, it's going to take a few years to confirm all of this. This is just one of the first such propositions, even though scientists have been working on this for many decades now. So we'll definitely come back and talk more about this, especially if someone does discover something absolutely incredible when it comes to this unusual formation. Specifically, what exactly did they do to Earth when this impact did happen? At the moment, it's not really clear. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.